Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark. I'm in the studio here with Steve Martin, and we're talking about Final Cut Pro and the through edit, right? The through edit. The edit that is actually not really an edit. Yeah, in fact, I like to call them phantom edits. Phantom edits, yes. yeah. Yeah. Um, what is a through edit? Because we had them in Final Cut 7. Yeah. And uh, we use them quite a bit. And essentially, if you use the textbook definition of a through edit, it's basically an edit where the time code doesn't change across the edit. Okay. So you can it's, put it's an edit there. It's and like you, you, cut it, you cut a clip. You cut a clip and you play it and it doesn't seem like there's a cut there. So you cut a clip but you don't actually do anything. You don't switch the other clip, you don't move the clips around, you don't trim or, or anything. Right, but there's some specific reasons you might want to use through edits. Really? And yes, and I'll show you them, but also if you out there are uh, using through edits that maybe uh, we haven't thought of, please uh, let us know on our, on our YouTube, YouTube channel. So let's look, let's look at the use okay. of one. Okay, so right. through edit. So just quickly, let's look at how, how you would Create one. You just essentially park your playhead over a clip and hit Command B. Okay. Now, if I zoom in uh, to this clip, by the way, I'm going to zoom in here and so you can see this. A through edit is kind of defined by a little dotted line. Yeah, yeah. In so fact, you can tell it from the other edit point, which right. is a regular edit as a solid line. You're going and from one clip to the next. A through edit is a dotted line. Okay. See, that's kind of nice. Yeah. Um, you might recognize a dotted line. It's the same dotted line you would see if you did a multi. Multicam clips. Yes. Exactly. So. The idea is you can uh, adjust that through edit point, and we'll get to that in a moment. I'm just going to show you what it is. But notice as you play over it, I mean, it's like that it wasn't there. Like I said, a phantom edit. Okay. Now there are reasons to use it, but right now I'm going to show you how to get rid of one. You just select the edit point. Okay. Right. Either either side. Either of the side, edit and you just press delete. Delete. Okay. You're done. That was legacy Final Cut worked in a similar way. Legacy like, Final Cut did the same thing. Yeah, right. so you can get rid of them. And that, that's relatively new in Final Cut Pro 10, isn't they, it? They just added it in the last version, the 10.1.1 update. Ah, that okay. That came out in December. Okay, that's, yeah. That's new. Yeah, that's great. Because sometimes I just like to clean stuff up. I don't, right. I don't so, like phantom edits hanging around. Well, let's, I know, but sometimes they're useful. So let's do a phantom edit or through edit. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to just do a through edit right here. So on, this this, on this connected clip? On this connected clip. So connected storyline. So I'm going to select the clip and hit... Command B. Okay. Now this this portion of the clip is selected. Now what I'm going to do is hit Command Six, and I'm going to open up the uh, color board, go into the saturation pane, and I'm just going to desaturate that side of the edit. Okay. So what's really nice about this, I'm going to um, it's going to zoom in a bit because it's a through edit. There's no there's no jump cut. It just plays across. So it's perfectly continuous in terms of the content, but now you have a sudden shift in the color. Right, but I'm going to change the sudden shift by just selecting the edit point because it behaves like it behaves like any other edit point. Yeah. So I just select it, and now I'm going to hit Command T. Command T Command for the default transition, which is hopefully not a page peel. And uh, <laughs> if, if you so, changed it, right, right. But see, now uh, I can grab this and so and, and the versatility. Mm. There I have. I just I had this really nice effect where I went from essentially desaturated to uh, saturated. Mm. Now we used to do that all the time in Final Cut Pro 7. You want to create this nice effect, you just create a, a through edit, throw the effect on one side, throw a dissolve on, and then you get this nice little effect. I saw them in the Sherlock Holmes movie last night where they went from a very treated uh, shot that panned down and turned into sort of modern day colors yes. over time. And you could do that exactly with a long cross dissolve across a, a through edit. It works great. The other thing about a through edit, let me go ahead and get rid of the transition. Uh, you don't know, need to get rid of the transition to do this, but I just want to show you because it's a through edit, if I press T to bring up the, the trim tool. tool, you can change where the edit happens. It's, so let's so say, you're rolling so the edit. So I'm rolling the edit. So I can say maybe I only want the black and white portion to happen for a few seconds before the color. Maybe I want more black and white and less color. So you just roll the through edit just like any other edit point. Okay, and, and again, because it's a through edit, it remains a through edit even when you roll it left to right because you're adding and taking away frames from either side by the exact same amount. That's right. Now, when it doesn't become a through edit is when you get the ripple tool. If you, as soon as you, as soon as you ripple the, as soon as you ripple the edit, let me switch back to uh, it. It, uh, it will be no longer, that's no longer a through yeah, edit. Yeah, because now you've actually changed. You don't have continuous time you code. You have continuous time code, exactly. Okay. Now, there's one other instance uh, really uh, good use of a through edit I want to show you. It has right. to do with audio. All right. All right, so let's uh, let's take a look at that. So I'm going to go over here to Mitch. He's talking. Uh, let's see here. Here's Mitch. Okay. Most of you are aware that you can open the audio components by control clicking and choosing. Um, you know, you can open the audio components option double clicking. It was already open there by the by default. I mean, had it open, but control click, 
expand audio components. Mm -hmm. What's unique about audio components is that whenever well, is you're- this, Is this separate audio components or you just attached, you just no, expanded the audio? I expanded the audio. You expanded the audio, and, okay. And the reason it's important to know this is that whenever you're in expanded audio components mode, you'll always get the range tool, your cursor will always become a range tool. I see. So it allows so you to do things like select certain mm -hmm. portions of the components and then you can do things like disable, mm -hmm. okay? But I get this question all the time. You know, it would be really fantastic if you could select a portion of the component and apply a filter like a compressor or an EQ to that selected range. Right. So if I open up uh, the effects and I go over here and I type in, I'll just, I'll just go ahead and type in an EQ. That looks like a, um, let's see, I'll just type in, one of my favorite uh, effects is channel EQ. So I have a channel EQ here. Now notice this. When I drag the channel, I can drop it on a component, but it always puts it on the entire okay. component. And this isn't really a component. This is just the whole audio. You're not broken out into the individual audio components here, oh, right? Oh, I am. This is... I am. It's just that you're only seeing one component out of ah, many. The rest okay. are turned off. Okay. Um, and that's why I really wanted to make clear that one way you know you're in component mode is if you have the trim tool. I see. The, the, okay. the rolling edit tool. Okay. And the reason it's a little bit confusing is we're only seeing one channel of the component. Yes. That's all. Yes. Okay. okay. So my point is, you. Uh, this is really great for isolating sections of the component, but you can't apply a filter within a range. You have to always apply it to the oh, entire. Thanks. And by the way, um, it, what I'm about to show you works whether you're working on components or not. Or not. Okay, okay. So, so here's the thing. This is where through edits come in. Um, I'm going to say like, I'm going to play a little bit. Of, actually, looks like I already have a through edit there. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Point is, let's say I want to just apply a filter to this section. Yes. So I just move my playhead and I hit Command B, and then I move my playhead. Like maybe I want to filter that section as a problem. So Command B. So now I essentially have uh, two through edits. I create a continue, you know, essentially a phantom cut. But what's great is when I and grab it's on, the key, it's on the audio it's as on well. It's on the audio as well. So now when I want to apply the effect, or the in this case the channel EQ, it's only applying that it section of within. The audio. The boundaries of those two, um, okay. what do you call it, uh, through edits. Assume through edits, yes. okay. So this is a way to say, look, I want that effect applied here and here. And so through edits will allow you to do that. And what's, Excellent. What's, That's what's, cool. Yeah, That's very what's cool. What's really nice if you press X and then your forward slash key. The, the love of flight and the love of film. It's the, the love of flight and the love of film. So what you could do is loop over that section, make your changes while you're, in, adjusting, while the you're adjusting in the filter HUD. So you can, when you go back into the inspector and uh, you go into the audio tab and you open the filter, um, you can actually make changes to whatever you've applied um, to your effect while it's, play, while it's playing back in real time. Very so, cool. So it's really, really handy to be able to use through edits to control where those audio filters are placed. Great. And then when you're done, if you don't like them, you can always just delete them or you can roll them or what have you. Yep. Yeah, so I'm going to close that. So there you have it. Strategic wow. uses of through edits. It's surprising how useful something is that isn't actually really a something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A through edit that's not really an edit. Cool. Very yeah, good, Steve. Uh, thank you. So if you want to learn more about Fonica Pro motion-related applications, or you want to check out all our plugins for Fonica Pro, check us out at rebeltraining.com. Like us on uh, Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and we'll see you again on the next MacBreak Studio. Thanks for watching.